Well, welcome chord lovers, back to chord arts. And today I want to try and start off a tutorial to make a monkey fingerling. I think most of uh, the people who follow uh, the chord art fraternity have seen this one. So without too much going on, saying too much, um, let's talk about making this. Now, as you can see, it's got um, a diamond knot for its feet, diamond knot for its hands, a double diamond knot for its nose. In fact, the ears are diamond knots as well. It's strange that these are so big and these are so small, but it's, a, it's about the tie. I mean, this is a loose tie, whereas that's a tight tie. Um, what have we got? We've got snake knots down the legs and the arms in two different colours. And we have three chord um, crown knot for the tail. A uh, little quiff on the top, a bit of orange there. Eyes, are, eyes and face are basically your own licence. But uh, we will be making a face. Um, for the monkey that we're going to build today. So with that, we need some bits and pieces to make him with. So we put, put him back over there with his mates. I do like an audience when I'm making things. Well, you can see this large box of uh, polystyrene balls here. Um, these are all bits and pieces that I've bought. I mean, it's just coming up to Easter, so there's plenty of these around. Any problem with these? Um, is all the sparkle falls off of them. I mean, it's irrelevant if they've got a colour on them because it's just the shape I want and the fact that they're polystyrene. Um, so today we're going to have two polystyrene as um, the base of this um, fingerling. We want an inch and a half polystyrene ball, which I've got here in the um, jig. And we want an egg-shaped um, piece of polystyrene which is an inch and a half in diameter and two inches long and the idea is for this part of the I push the, put the back over there out the way for the moment um, for, for this part of the uh, tutorial it's all about making two monkeys fists um, I've, I'm sure that you've seen me make monkeys fists before but what we need for the first part on this one and a half inch diameter ball is nine feet of the color of your choice. For that one, we're gonna be using 10 feet because it uses a little bit more. Now, that sizing is generous. I mean, I have made things in the past and I thought to myself I was gonna run out and I, I'd wish I'd made them longer. So let's get straight into making the head for the monkey. Um, as usual, I like to wrap around three times to this point here. And this is a nice colored pink. I've got lots of people asking me to make them pink um, monkeys. I like making the multicolored ones, but uh, people seem to like the pink with another color. So there we go again, and a pin up through on that corner position to keep the place. Now we're gonna be going around this six times. You can let go of that um, end there now. So we're going around six times that's basically three there to that point there so three i don't know if you noticed but i've got um a needle on the end the other end of this and i'll need that for the last passing around this so where are we now um two four, six, so we need to come back round to that position, 
so that we have six on all sides. We just push that pin up a little bit more so we've got a few more cords. We're now got now six is just under covering that ball if you see what I mean. Um, there's a little bit of white at the bottom, a little bit of white at the top. We should be okay with that. Um, so next is to go from this point here, we're gonna go backwards. From front to back. Then round down along the back of the um, ball itself, well, the cords under through the bottom, and we're gonna put six through here. Four. six over the top now um, one two three four five six so then you got five at the base so we'll come back under that'll give us six on the base so we come up to that position where we have now six across there we'll take our pin out down the bottom here now because these are, are holding this one so we don't need that pin there. We put the pin through there, into the ball, like so. And then the idea is that we're going to go down through there and then backwards. So we'll do that. I'm trying to speed this up. I'm, a, I'm aware that uh, my videos can be quite long. That's nice. Down through there. Right, two at the top. This is the third at the bottom. Underneath. And forward. Don't know if you can actually hear the blackbirds outside. My last uh, video, I didn't realize until I played it through afterwards, I had a guy outside going along with a motorbike. Uh, it didn't worry me, but it overpowered any music that I was playing in the background. But then a lot of people like motorbikes. Indeed, I drove one for many years in my younger days. but they don't really go well with videos, well, the sound effects anyway. We're getting there now. As I say, we want six rounds, all sides and top and bottom. We've got four at the top at the moment, just going into our fifth on the base. see that that nine feet oh there's the ice cream man <laughs> destiny so that's three on the top and this is the fifth thank you ice cream man right 
we have six on the base. We have one, two, three, four, five on the top. So this needs to come up there and back. That will give us six on the top. Just enough to come down there to give us six, six and six. I think, I hope I'm, I'm in shot with this. So what we'll do now is take that pin out. Not need it anymore. We'll take the uh, fit off. start to tighten up. Much similar to the bigger monkey's fist that I do, um, I like to start off with, well, it doesn't really matter where we start, I know that we just finished there, so I like to start where we started. So I'll, I'll just keep hold of that tag, pull in a bit of tension there and bring it round. Now I was going to actually just um, click off and come back, but I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll tighten this one up completely together because um, I know that there was a few people asking for more directions on monkey's fists. Um, I've only actually done one video, uh, well two really if you count the um, coloured coloured one, but that was a bit different from tying a normal monkey's fist. Um, I've only done, shown one monkey's fist online and that was quite a big one for my elephant. Um, the elephant's body and the head was quite big as well so this is a size that most people like to um, think about making a monkey's fist. Something with four, five, six uh, cords going around that's gone a bit loose there, that's a bit odd. So we're just placing them around the ball, no real stress on them. Right, now where did we go there? That's that one. Yeah, so we've come around that last one there. Now we're going to change direction back this way for the third passing. I find this quite therapeutic, especially with the blackbirds singing outside. But my wife's just come home and I've got a feeling that she's going to open the door and say hello any second. So I might have to skip that. <laughs> but that's life. should be one tightening just there yeah so it's uh, that's nearly good enough for what we're doing but it just feels a bit soft um, but then the whole idea is the thing that is soft isn't it but no I'm going to tighten that again um, uh, I, I, as I say, I will be doing this one offline, but it's exactly the same sequence. Um, the only difference is, as I say, it's an inch and a half by two inches, and it's got five passes, five passes, and nine passes, i.e. nine going up the long way, five round one way, and five through the other. Um, Perhaps I'll just dip into that one to show you what I'm doing when I've got a good start on it. Right, so we're back to tightening this for the second time. I don't want to go OTT on this. I do tend to over tighten things a bit sometimes and then they go out of shape, especially with the polystyrene balls. 
So it's just a matter of gauging it really, how, how tight you want it. It's much easier to make these smaller ones than the big ones I normally make. Well, the ice cream man's uh, must be doing a roaring trade out there. It's coming up to the end of this one. As you can see I'm not I'm not pulling it really tight. Nice and neat. Now he's coming back this way. Gone. That would be the last one there. And then we come back this way. I pull it with that so that you you know I could actually pull it and dislodge these and I don't want to do that so we just leave it like that. Now we're going to go round this way taking that slack through. I mean we've got this much slack we'll probably get, gather a little bit more as we go along. We're just about done on this one I think aren't we? Um, oh right one more pass because we've just come down that second row there we're coming back here to go up the last sides. A little bit of tension, not too much. Someone's asked me to make a frog. I'm putting a, a lot of thought into actually how I would make a frog. Um, they don't want it in a cartoon character style. They want a, quite a serious frog. Um, if that's possible, <laughs> do you get serious frogs? I don't know. Um, what I'm trying to say is that it's got to look a bit more like a frog than a cartoon. Um, I got a few ideas floating about in my head. I thought, I thought, you know, in an older age, I find myself daydreaming about, oh, how am I going to get the frog to do that and this and that? Um, but unfortunately, at the moment, my mind is, or well, my head is full up with what we're doing here, these fingerlings. Um, it's funny how you can get stuck on something for a while. Um, I eventually will get fed up with making them, um, although there's umpteen people asking to buy them. Of course, as usual, I've got no idea how much I should charge. I don't usually sell any items. I, I just part, or I either keep them or pass them on to friends and family. Um, but people are insistent, and I suppose with these fingerlings, I've probably got about. 10 people who want them so I should imagine by the time I've done 10 of these I'd have had enough to be quite honest gone on to something else right there we go not too bad at all I'm quite happy with that get a nice face on this one nice flat surface there in fact all the all the sides on this one look quite good I will be cutting these off fairly short and I, I did give them a bit of a melting and then I tuck them under that one to go underneath there and I'll melt this one and it will naturally go up that way there. So what I'll do is I'll click off there, um, I'll trim this one. Um, I'll get a good start on this one and show you a bit of that one, what's going on with that one and click off again and then probably come back again towards the end of doing this one.
Yeah. See you soon. Well, welcome back. Um, just to dip into this second monkey's fist, um, the first thing I'd like to say is I'd like to re-amend the length of cord on this slightly bigger monkey's fist. I told everybody it was um, 10 feet. I would, I would make it 11. The reason I say that is I've just been doing this one and I got to a point where I'd run out of cord just at the top here. I couldn't get this last one down through here. Um, the only way that I've managed to do that and not to uh, scrap the whole project is to take in that tag that I usually have out here about um, a couple of inches and I've had to draw that all the way through whilst it's been on the jig. Uh, we just pop that off. We can get rid of the jig. And I'm gonna click off again and come back when I've tightened it. Um, try and speed things up. Well, there you have it. Um, I've just completed both of those monkey's fists now. And I'm really quite pleased how they've come out. As I say, I didn't like the lines going across the pink. There you go. That's just about perfect sizing. Um, I would adhere to what I actually said about making this one um, 10 foot 6 inches of cord rather than 10 feet, or else you'll come unstuck. But um, I think I might have had enough today. Um, I'm sure my crowd at the back there has. Um, so I'll follow on with this tutorial. Um, what we will be doing, I'll be showing you how to set the lengths of the legs, how to tie their hands and feet, also their nose, a few other bits and pieces. Hopefully I can cover it all in another session of the video. I don't want to make this one too long. I'm aware that people get fed up with me droning on. So I'll see you when I see you. Bye. Well, welcome back. Um, different audience today. Don't know if I can show you them. There they are, all lined up. I don't know why they keep coming back to me. But uh, let's see if we can push on this project today a fair bit. I've been doing bits and bits and pieces behind the scenes. Uh, so we'll jump straight into this. Um, I'm going to make probably two, um, or demonstrate two um, diamond knots. One's going to be for the ear, which is a loose tie. And as you can see, one is going to be for the legs, which is going to be its feet. Come back to that in a minute. Let's just go quickly through doing this ear. By the ear and diamond knot, a foot length of pink. And I'm going to do this quite quickly because uh, um, I've demonstrated this before on a video. So up around, pinch hold of the loop that we now have, off to the right hand side. I tend to take up a little bit of slack in the downward um, cord because then I can just wrap it around the back, go straight across and through that loop. And in doing so, we can actually just gradually bring it together, finding our diamond shape in the middle. Now, I also like to feed a little bit. Can you see now I've got, I've taken it to the end of my finger. I've got a bit more um, cord than I need now. So I just keep it on the end of my finger. Um, bring a little bit, I'm dragging it from the bottom, a little bit there. That'll come around, give me a little bit more cord to use that way. And again, this way, I'll just bring a little bit of cord up that way from the base, pull it through. And there we go. I mean, I've diminished this piece. I've still got my diamond in, in the middle. So this one 
is going to go right the way around that bottom loop. Hopefully up through the middle. When we put it up through the middle, we just keep it up to the knot. We don't let it flop right back down. So we've got that. Grab hold of the other one, which comes out this side. Go right the way around this bottom loop again. And up through. And we can grab hold of the two ends. Grab hold of the bottom loop. And just manoeuvre it slowly but surely into a shape. Now the idea is to get two of these cords. There they are, two of them coming right out the centre. The other two coming out the centre more or less. Now we don't want to pull this one too tight. As you can see, I've, I've kept it fairly loose on this one. Um, but we do want to make sure that the knot is tied properly. So we'll just, I just spend a bit of time facing it round, making sure that uh, there's not any big loops that look a little bit untoward. So I think we're just about there there, loose tie on a diamond knot. Do apologise for any noises you might hear, I've got some quite active neighbours. Um, and that's all I can say about that. Quite active neighbours, like to bang around a bit, but there you go. Um, so we've cut off those two ends. We just singe across the top. Nice, not too hot, we don't want to make it black. Wet the finger and on we go. Same the other end, or same at the back. Just cut that loop off even about a quarter of an inch. Cut myself down. Right, emergency over. As you can see, it's just a snick. So I did manage to um, keep hold of that uh, ear that we've made. So to complete the ear, um, two bits of, of the color that we're going to use to supplement the pink. Um, I want to, I've cut these because I want to cover three quarters of the way around. Just like this monkey here, you can see the purple goes round about three quarters of the way, just over three quarters of the way. Um, so that's what we're trying to achieve now. Um, I like to keep the two dots to the front. There's two dots on the back, but usually on the back, they're apart from each other. So you can choose which fascia you want. We'll just place that where we want it to be. A touch a super glue. There is super glue involved in a couple of the bits I'm doing, especially for the face and head. Um, everything else is as much as you see it, um, just woven. But, uh, I'd, uh, I was speaking to someone online, someone asked me if I used glue on these and I said I do on fixing and making the eyes, um, fixing the ears to the head and fixing the nose to the head. Um, I dab here and there but that's about all. I don't like using too much glue and I think I could actually make them without any super glue if I wanted to but it just speeds the thing up. Now well, why then why won't that super glue super glue? That's a bit strange. I'm usually having to fight the super glue. Maybe I want it to work too fast. Let's just hold it on there for a minute and see what happens. I can still feel it starting to stick my fingers a bit. Don't know why it doesn't want to stick this darker pink. We'll give it a good old go. Um, that's what I'm trying to achieve. 
like so. And then we'll just stick this onto the side of the uh, head. As I say, I've thought about, you know, how I could actually fix them to the head without super glue. I'd probably have to glue that piece on. I could have a piece of the cable coming out, round through, push it down through the head. That would do it. That's that one. Just uh, dunk another little bit on this end here. And I think that's the ears made. I think I'll leave them for, for the moment. Two ears. Um, let's turn our attention to the body. Now, all I've done here is got hold of a piece of red because I wanted the hands and feet red. You won't see any of these because it'll be cover, covered over with snake knot or a knot of your choice really. I've seen some nice ones, two cord um, bracelets, anything would go down there. You could actually choose. I mean, snake knot for me is easy. Um, yeah, we'll stick with the snake knot on this one. Um, you can see that I've driven a, a thin fid through the side of the body, um, made a hole right the way through, and I've gone three from the front, I think that's the front, yeah, three, three from the front, and two down on these threads going up and down. So I've made that hole, and the reason I've made that hole is to show you um, how easy it is to do the hands. Now. I've made those three inches long. So from there to the knot is three inches. When we, when we put one of these cords through um, the body, we only want two inch arms. So we have to fiddle around with the diamond knot a little bit. Um, the reason I've actually put a thin fit through there is, well, you'll see. Now, for this, piece to be repeated at the top here we need um, let's see now what did I measure that out um, a 20 inch piece of 550 cord and there we have it we've on it a needle uh, it's on a 550 fid so how do we get 550 fid through there quite easily we just follow this one through like so not the only cord that we're going to be putting through here we're going to be putting two more through there as well so find the center like so all oh, fids come off that's okay put the fids over there make sure I'm not pushing super glue all over the place so bring those down sorry I'm going off screen bring those down so that they're equal yeah just about equal. Put our middle finger through so we've got the whole of the body behind and we just tie a diamond knot. So again round the fit up and round the finger you've got a twist there it'll hold that twist it lay it down on this vertical cord Pull up a little bit of extra cord from this one. Take this one around the back of that one. Go straight through, over that one, under this one, and over the next one. Right, so there's our diamond again. Hopefully it's showing on screen. There's our diamond again. Now what I'm saying is I need these arms to be two inches long. Um, you can achieve that either now or later by pulling bits and pieces through. 
Let's just measure what see what we've got at the moment. So we have a good two inches and a good two inches. So like before, I'm going to take up a little bit from below and bring it to the top. Now you only have to do that on one really because it's, it all moves through. But you've got to remember that at the end of the day when we tighten the knot up, it's going to be a, a, a tight one this one. So it does look awful if you've got two longer arms and it doesn't actually work when you do the finger bit. Um, just measure that again. I think we're close, but not close enough. Can you see it's two and a half inches? So we'll take some more through. As I say, it doesn't matter where you pull it from because it's all one piece. We'll take a bit there, bring that round, bring that through. We've still got our diamond there. Level those two bits up a bit by pulling and shunting. Measure again, two inches, just under two inches. So I, I guess that we're gonna be just about right there, but we, we have a second chance to um, put things right in a minute. So there we are, two arms coming out. Now, this piece here over on the, well, it'd be on your left, I think. Yeah, your left maybe. That's got to go right the way round, round the other arm, and up through the diamond. Bring out a little bit of slack. This one's got to go, which is on your, I believe it's on your right, it's got to go over the top of that arm there, then up through the diamond. And we'll pull a little bit of slack in there. Right. So we just manoeuvre that knot slowly but surely into the shape it should be. And then we'll have a look at our lengths again. Uh, I'd say that's spot on and spot on. If we can keep them there as we tie, I think we'll be just about there. Now, inevitably with these, you get a bit of slack. So we just got to follow that round. The only problem is I don't want to put any more slack into these arms. So where I see the slack, I like to follow it around with my eye. Um, and that one, I believe is going to go upwards. So, let's see. Um, bring that there. Bring that round to there. If it starts diving down into the arms again, you can always change direction and take it the other way. Um, tighten that little slack up there. Come down here with the slack. But I think it's going to be this one here. Here it is. So we went the right way. So there you go. Two inch arms, three inch legs. See if I can snip that off without snipping my finger again. I haven't done that for a long time. So we just got a, a few stubs there. We'll heat that up. The reason I don't use, like using the lighter, sometimes, you, especially on the lighter colours, you lose it, you leave burnt bits from the lighter onto it. So that's good. So we've got the body just about ready. Um, down here, you'll see that I've got, um, what, how much have I got there for the arms and legs? I've kept it at three feet. So there's three feet. And um, what we'll do, that first off, we'll do the easy bit, because all we've done with the legs is slid it underneath the bottom uh, five cords. Um, 
I will put a fit on it rather than muck around. So the fit goes on. Now, we're going to be putting a colour at the back and another colour, i.e. light pink, to the front. Now that will depict what colour goes on the outside of the arms and legs and what colour goes on the inside. As you can see with the purple, I've got the purple on the inside, whereas, I don't know where it's gone at the moment, um, on the grey, I've got the pink on the inside and the grey on the outside. I don't mind either. I think I've got it fathomed that where I've got to have each colour, but don't be surprised if it comes out vice versa. So I'm going to put my stronger colour to the back. Just slide it underneath to the back. Find the centre, which is somewhere about there. As I say, these are three feet long pieces of cord. The pink that I'm just going to use is also three, three feet. And then I've got two, two more bits here for um, the arms. Um, as, you, as you can imagine, there's probably a little bit more spare on the arms because it's, they're a bit shorter. So we've put the darker pink to the back, just slid that underneath. We put the lighter pink to the front. Find halfway, which is about there. Move the fid. Right, what I like to do is hold it hands out this way, away from me. Um, I'm only going to do when it, one either side on this and then complete off screen. So I like to get hold of the black, oh sorry, not the black, the darker pink and lay it along the leg, like so. Then take the pink. Go over and around. Can you see that we've got that cross there now? Yeah? It's, the pink is crossing just this side of the inside of the leg. And then we leave that for the moment. We can make it a bit smaller. Bring it down like so. And then this pink, the darker pink, has to come up through here. So it comes up through there. And then back through the loop that we made with the with the lighter pink. Now we just fiddle around with that for the first moment, but I assure you, we will end up with the first part of a snake knot. Can you see? And I think this one's going to be pink on the outside. I don't know if that's what I meant in the first place. Pink on the outside light pink on the outside and dark pink on the inside. I have a strange feeling that I said it was going to be the vice versa, but uh, there you go. I'm happy with that. So if you wanted, well, let's see what happens because it's not all as it seems half the time. So we've got the legs like that. So then we would actually carry on down. I'll do one more on that one. So we've got the pink following down the leg light pink goes around both of them and comes up through its legs we end up with the crossover point here then the dark pink comes up through the legs below that crossover point yeah like so and then dives down through the lighter pink. Just bring them together nicely. A little bit of time spent on getting the few links in the beginning right is well worth the effort. Right, so I'm going to carry on down there. 
Um, let's turn our attentions to the what I see as the right leg. Um, take the dark colour down that outside colour, outside leg, like we did on the other one. Go over the two colours and back through. Now, sorry, losing my space there. Over the two colours and back up through the legs. We then have that crossover point there, yeah? Across just there. The, the darker pink then will come underneath up through the legs, but below that cross, and back down through. Bit of time spent, as I say. And we'll see what we come up with. Would be nice to have um, the darker colour go down the inside of each leg rather than one leg. So there you go. That's what we're going to be doing. Going down there, and as I say, that's two and a half inches long. Um, we're going to turn our attentions away from that for the moment because I'm going to finish that off the first screen. Um, and look at putting two more colours through here. Right, fid. Um, we'll go with the pink first. Now, brain's gone. I think I put the darker colour to the back, didn't I? So the lighter colour has got to follow that red to the front. the lighter colour. Bring, bring them down to about the same size or the same level. Take that one off. Um, looking for the best end for the fid. I think that'll be okay. And then we take the towards the back of the red feel that we're just offline there a little bit. Play around with this one. Oh, there we go. And then that comes through like so. And we have the dark red or the dark pink towards the back of the arms. Remember you won't have all this cable here from the legs when you're doing the arms because you'd have completed them. I mean you just follow down and singe it off at the ends. Um, it's quite easy. Um, just make sure that that darker colour is the same, yep. Take the fit off and we do exactly the same. Follow that dark pink down there, oh sorry. Follow the arm down with the, the dark pink, bring that up through. And then we're going to go over both colours back underneath the arms making that cross like so bring the darker pink up for the arms but below that crossover point like so and then dive down through that loop and hopefully we'll end up with the colors going in the same direction as the legs. So I'm just going to hold that there. I'm going to do that off screen. I'll do this one. Um, that pink's going to come up through because I want that above and at the front. If you can see, it's at the front. Darker colour is going to follow the arm. Underneath. The arm, make the cross, 
bring the darker pink up through and under the cross and then dive down through the pink hole and with a bit of luck tighten that slowly but surely we'll have the first link of our snake knot yeah they all look about the same don't they sort of pink there pink there pink coming out of them so i'm pretty happy about that so with that bit i'm going to I'm gonna put that to the side in a minute i'll come back and show you when i've done that um let's think about the head what have we done with the head well we're going to need to join the head i've I've cut a piece of wire about two inches long. I've cut a, I've melted one end there um, of a piece of 550 red. Now, I wanna push this down through with the threads inside. So I've, I've left the threads a little bit longer so I can keep hold of them and don't sort of mush them up so much as I would otherwise inside. Um, so that's looking pretty good yeah so I've got a piece of wire and a two inch piece of cord so let's melt that over before it goes wrong uh, let's fill that yeah I think we can get away without taking the tops of those off and then we'll just have a nice pointy end on there that is going to be for going up into the head and down into the body. Yeah, that'll be a bit later, but we'll leave that with the ears. Let's have a look at this. Now I've driven an yet another um, needle down through the head and it's got a piece of, oh, about three inch uh, gutted 550 dark pink. And the reason I've done that is that that's going to be, whoops, that's going to be his hair about there. I don't know if I've actually made them long enough or that long enough. Yeah, I think I have. That would be okay. I normally melt it this end. Um, I don't know whether, but I want to put a couple more in there as well. Um, there's a red. I thought we'd put that in as well with that one see what happens here I've refilled that red now I think I've speared it yeah I have I've speared it um, let's push through no 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 that's not gonna work um, I think oops yeah you can see what I've done I've speared it not very good at all. So we're going to leave that one and we're going to, I've actually chose the joining point. You know, remember those dark lines I've got, that's going to be between the body and the what's set. So there's one there, but I'm not too worried about that. So this red is going to be the hair. Just there. I was going to put three through. I was going to put red, um, pink, and two pinks. And why won't that come off of there? Right. That'll do. And then we'll just remelt that so that it locks on. We're going to need to be putting our um, what's it in there shortly, but we'll we'll play around with the hole. And then the idea of the hair is that we just tease the threads apart, and I'll go on to doing that a little bit better offline. Uh, what else have we got? I think we can put the ears on. Uh, use a bit of super glue to put the ears on because then the, you get a bit of perspective. Um, so it's basically just gluing them on. 
but I liked, excuse me, the sixth step, I like to um, go to the third one. Um, try and get this top piece of pink to the edge of these six threads at the top. Um, so having in mind I now know that it's going to be on the third one, I'll give this some super glue down where I think the ear is going to go and see if we can get it to stick on. Might need a bit of fortifying in a minute. We'll do the same on the other side. Third one back, or third one forward. So it's a fourth one back. shove on there for a second. As I say the hair will look a lot better when I've actually unraveled it and then I, I, I usually brush it with a little wire brush. So that's starting to look something like a, a monkey's head. I can still feel that the glue is a bit tacky but that's going to be our face. Now what I've done also, put him to one side for a minute or her probably a her, being so pink. Um, I've made a nose. Now, I don't intend on showing you how I did this because I've just showed two diamond knots. Now this is just a double diamond knot. If you do exactly the same as I did with one single piece, putting it through my fingers, like so, and but you have two coming through, yeah? you tie the diamond knot exactly the same. When you've got it fairly tight, you start to maneuver the two loops that come through, yeah? And in fact, down inside that center is the two loops. And then I've just worked them through, worked them through, tightened up, and it's quite a quite tight nose, that one. Now, as you can see on the previous ones, except for my coloured one, well you can't see them at the moment, except for my multicoloured one, the nose was made out of type 1. Now it might be a choice that you want it to make it out of type 1. I've made it out of 550, this one. So let's just cut that off. Now I don't think I need to melt that because that's going to be glued just there like so, yeah? But before we put that on, I wanna play around with the eyes. Now, as I said earlier on in the video, um, it's your own license really, how you make the eyes. And if we look at the eyes on, say, the first one I ever made of these, I got hold of some uh, thin cord, very soft cord, and just formulated like an, a figure of eight on its face with the cord and glued it on. Surrounded it by, by a bit of the colour that we was using as well as the pink, which I think looks quite good. That's what the hair's going to look like in a minute when we finish the other one. Um, and then with the eyes, I've got some, well, with the eyes, show you the eyes that I've been making. With the eye, that's going to be the pupil. And you can see that I've actually um, twirled a piece of one mil black. This stuff has got one core inside of it. Another, another product from China, I think. Um, so I've got two of those to go on. Uh, which will be super glued on. But I've also, I, I don't know if you can see it in shot. Yeah, you can see it in shot, I think. So there's the black that I use for the pupils. 
This is going to be the surround of the eyes. Um, now, it's a multicoloured one. I don't usually use it much, but I noticed that a section of it had got um, a pink leading to a purple, leading to, well, a mauve and then a purple, or a purple and then a mauve. Um, but I was more interested in the pink, so I started off twirling those. Um, I had to start on the orange, but the orange would be covered by the pupil. Um, and the idea is if we snip that off, there's one. As I say, it takes a while. I've, uh, all I've done is twirled them round and round and round, and then a ta whilst holding it like this, just a tad of super glue here and there so that it didn't fall to bits. So that is going to be the background of our eye. Scissors. There we go. Right, so we need to get proportion now. And that's why I put the ears on. Um, let's have a look at that, these. Now I want these just to touch the top of the horizontal. So if I take a pin and hmm, I don't think I've got a hole through that. I think the glue is actually covered the hole. I know that there's a hole in the other one. Um, so let's put the other one on. There's one. I just want to see if the nose is in the right place when we put it on. If I can, I think the centre of this one fell out last night, and I had to re-glue it. That's why I can't get a pin through. No, I don't think I'm going to be able to get a pin through that. Um, so that is what I envisage, something like that, with the nose somewhere like so. I quite like it. So once we've stuck those two on, we'll then put an eye ball or a pupil on top of that here. So that's going to be super glued on, that's going to be super glued on. Um, I think I'll probably click off there, catch up with some of this stuff. If there's anything else you need to know, I will stop and then show it. But I'll progress this on a little bit. You know which way I'm going to go with the arms and the legs. I might just show um, me finishing off one of those so that you see what, what we do with the melting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stick these onto the face. Stick the nose on. Um, and then we'll decide whether we need anything else on the face. I mean, do we play around with a bit of this? Maybe. We'll see what the nose and... That looks quite good, actually. Quite like the colour scheme like that. Um, but I'll click off there and come back to you shortly. Right, I'll click back on there because I've now completed the legs and the left arm. Um, just wanted to show you the last arm. So as I said earlier, dark color next to the arm like so. Bring the pink over and up under the arms. You end up with a natural cross there. Sorry, natural cross over inside the arms. Bring the pink under, the dark pink this is, up through and down through the loop. Now this, let's talk about snake knots. I've watched quite a few videos on snake knots and I know that I've got my favourites. Um, they give you pointers how they should actually look 
how they should marry up and everything. Well, that's not quite possible with these because they are going on rounded cords as a, as a core. So it does throw them out a little bit. So it's just a matter of playing around with them until you're happy um, afterwards. It's like now I could actually play around with it, these, get them in position so that I'm happy with them. Um, they don't, what I'm trying to say is they don't come out perfect. So there we go, dark color alongside the arm, pink over, up through. There's that cross that I'm on about with that cross in position, get hold of the darker pink. Come on, come underneath it, that's it. Come underneath that crossover point, just like so, and then down through that loop. Oh, I've just finished that off because I I'm oblivious to it, but I realize there's a, a, quite a large machine going on outside the house. So I'll click off here and click back in a minute. Well, welcome back again. Um, I've pushed on a little bit since I last spoke to you. I've been brushing its hair. Um, just so it looks, looks the part. Now, I've finished the face. All I did was stick on the two pinky round bits and the two eyes, uh, well, pupils. Stuck the nose on. I think he looks pretty good there. Not quite finished yet. I'll, we're gonna finish that off together. Um, underneath, I've got that two inch piece of wire in uh, side the core. So it's up inside the head an inch. And I've also made a hole in the top of the body. Arms and legs have come out quite well. Quite pleased with that. Um, so what we'll do is we'll slide that partially down. Now I've tilted it back slightly. I like the I like the head to sort of tilt backwards slightly. Um, we're just going to touch it with a, a touch of super glue here. Hopefully there's still some left in the tube. Right, let's make sure that they stay together. Might have to fortify that with a bit of glue around the back end in a second. Still seems to be staying there, so I'll give it a little bit of uh, support at the back. Right, so here we are. I've given it a couple of eyebrows. Um, all it is is uh, three quarters of an inch of the colored that we've gone with for the secondary color. Uh, just gutted it, um, heated the ends over, just stuck it in position. She's also got a little mouth. That was another piece of gutted just tucked up underneath these bottom uh, five or six threads um, and made into sort of like um, lips. I think that's quite good. Um, one last thing to do before we say goodbye to this uh, creature. Um, I've got a paintbrush here and I've got a little bit of acrylic. I used to, um, a piece of uh, white, I'm going to wipe that off my hands. Um, yeah, I used to uh, tie a piece of white inner um, and make a little knot and then stick it on the eye just there and there. Uh, let me just show you. Um, well, no, right back as far as my, my hobbits, um, I tend to give them just a tad of white at the top of the eyeball, just like a reflection mark. Um, we'll leave that over there with the monkeys for the moment. 
Um, we'll get a bit of paint. As I say, this is uh, acrylic, um, which is kids' paint as I, I see it, but it's quite useful. So we're just going to touch the slight little bit of, and then just touching the top of his eye there. No more than that, really. And it looks as though there's a, a glint. And then we have it wash the brush in a minute. Fortunately, it's just a water wash. So there we have her. Um, I'm quite pleased with that. Is she still in, in shot? Yeah, I think she is. Well, look, let's do a close up first. So there's the nose. I do like that double um, diamond knot nose in a 550. It gives it a bit of bulk rather than the smaller one. Uh, it's a matter of choice, I suppose. I'm quite pleased with the eyebrows and the mouth. Could have taken it further. I mean, if we look at one of the previous ones, uh, we've I've wrapped quite a bit of stuff trying to formulate a, a face, but it's not necessary. Sometimes less is better, I think. And I think that's just about right. Um, yeah, there's 12 knots in each leg. Well, I'm lying actually. There's 12 in that one and there's only 11 in that one. So I'm owning up a bit here. Um, we started off three feet going through of both colors. I'd give a, a couple of extra inches. Instead of 36 inches, I'll give 38 inches on the legs. You can get away easily with 36 on the arms. So 38 inches, I just changed that in my book because um, yeah, I didn't have enough to do the 12th, the 12th uh, tie on that one, um, or this one. So we got 11 and 12, not that it matters. They, they've equaled out quite well. Same amount on the top here, nine down on each side of the arm. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Not a lot really. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, we'll put his little, or, oh, I'll tell you what I've forgotten to do. And that's the tail. So I'm gonna to have to click off there. I'm so, I mean, the first one I made, I forgot to put a tail on it. I'll click off there um, and sort out a tail. Right, uh, back with you. Um, what am I up to now? Well, we're doing the tail. Now, the way I normally do a tail is get uh, some of this very thin wire, really flexible from uh, uh, garden centre and uh, they use it for all different sorts of things. I've just looped a piece of wire through that middle cord that goes underneath its base um, just up that end and then started twisting it um, so that I've got plenty to use when I come up it with my knot. Um, let's see where we are now. We need to come up like that and we want to come over like so. So we're getting close. Um, but I tend to cut the wire, the second to last stitch that I do up the um, tail, then it's got enough uh, wire in it to keep its place. Yeah, there's plenty there. Um, so what do we do next? We need a 60 piece of, 60 inch, piece of uh, pink and we need a 30 inch piece of the darker inch, d darker uh, pink. Alright, so we'll uh, put a fit on, um, yeah we'll put the flat, flat fit onto the pink. Maybe. I think the, uh, hopefully it'll go on that. Well, it's only got to go underneath one stitch anyway, so we'll hope that it doesn't fall off. So we're going the same way as we did, what I did with the wire. Just come underneath that one. 
and thrill bringing the pink with us so this is the 60 inch piece so we're doubling it over to give us 30 on each like so right now we'll put the 30 inch piece of darker color So, and we're going to move those pinks out the way, put the green up the back of the, the green wire up the back of the model. Um, we're then going to come, hopefully, under both those pinks with the crossover point, and then come out just at the top like so now this one is just going to be pulled underneath so we've got to be a bit delicate when we're tightening this knot so it's a three core um, crown knot if we keep the wire in the center. Uh, go over the dark pink, oh, dark pink over the light pink, and then light pink over the here, down through the loop, get it started. As I say, I don't want to pull too much on this darker pink one because uh, it's only just placed in there. Once we've done one knot, we've got to start pulling that darker pink a bit more. So that's our first knot for the tail. Get the wire up through the middle again. One over, two over, and the third one which happens to be the darker pink, down through the hole. That's all there is to it, really. Um, I'm going to click off there. And then as we get closer, and to the point where we've got to cut the ends, I'll come back to you. Right, so we've travelled with this crown knot all the way up this wire, flexible wire, and I'm just about happy with the length of it. That turn around like that. So what we need to do now is hide that wire. So we'll clip off right up close to the knot and do one more, which is over over, over and through, here, that hides the end of the wire, get that nice and tight, that's the last one, um, snip, And singe. That's okay. Snip. That's okay. Last one. Now, the tail is going to come up the back, it's going to touch onto the head and then the wire inside is going to keep the curve. 
But if I let go of it, it goes down like that. Uh, so the option is, as per usual, with me, is to just give it a bit of assistance on the back of the head. And that's what I've done to the rest of them. Um, yeah, as you can see. Um, just a touch of assistance, as I call it. Um, just looking to see what I dropped. Yeah, that's okay. So there we go. That is the completed project. So just a quick recap. We did two monkey's fists. One on a ball for its head, one on an egg shape for its body. We passed three lines through the bottom of this, three lines. On one of them we tied a diamond knot. Uh, the other two we used to carry on down and do the snake knot. Same with the arms and legs, well, same with the arms. Uh, three, three cords through, one of them, the red one, we tied into a, um, a stopper knot or a diamond knot and then followed down through each side with the diamond knot. Um, we did a double corded diamond knot for the nose, which I think is splendid. And we did some loose fitting diamond knots for the ear, covered in a bit of cord give it a bit of hair by poking it right down through to inside and melting. And then the part that we forgot was its tail. That's two tails I've forgotten now. Um, but that is three cords, um, uh, 160 inches long and 130 inch long, double the 60 inch a lot over there. Um, and then we tie it up the wire that I'd fitted inside. Um, yeah, looks quite good. Who else have we got to come and see us? Plenty of these. Starting to get a little, little tribe of them. Um, he's not going to be outdone. And Roy's younger elephant. So let's. We've got all those in shop, nearly. We'll give you a, a bit of a, that's it, about there. So there's our audience. I'm not going to say ta-ta, <laughs> but um, I'll see you on. Thanks for watching. And if you like this, this is the first time I've said this, please subscribe. Thanks. Bye-bye.